Hi guys, it's Christina and in this video we're going to discuss spirulina, its benefits and I'm also going to show you four ways that you can incorporate it in your diet. If you enjoy this type of content then do hit the like button, subscribe and also hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload new videos, which is every week. Spirulina, referred to also as blue-green algae, grows both in fresh and salt water around the world and alongside its sister chlorella is one of the most talked about ingredients. It is considered a superfood because it's nutrient-packed and is linked to many health benefits. It has a very high content of macro and micronutrients, essential amino acids, vitamins and minerals, lipids, proteins, and antioxidants. In this table, you can see what one teaspoon or two grams of spirulina powder offer. This is based on Food Data Central from the US Department of Agriculture. Interestingly, the quality of protein spirulina is considered excellent as it provides all the essential amino acids, nine of them, that we need, making it a great source of plant-based protein. Spirulina is also considered as a complete food supplement to fight malnutritional deficiencies in developing countries. In spite of its nutrient value, it is really popular for its therapeutic effects that include reduction of cholesterol and weight management. A 2016 study showed that people who were overweight and ate spirulina for three months improved body index and BMI, as well as enhanced immune system and protection from radiation. There are claims that it can boost energy, but more studies are needed to prove this. By the way, all the studies mentioned in this video will be available on my blog post, the link to which I will provide in the description section. Spirulina is available in two forms, in tablet and in powder. Spirulina tablets are a great supplement and they are much easier to consume and I know that a lot of people do so, while spirulina powder has a very distinctive and grassy-like flavor which makes it very difficult for some people to incorporate it in their diet and I had to go through lots of experimentation to be able to incorporate it in my diet and these secrets I will share with you in this video. Spirulina in its powder form can be a very versatile ingredient and can be added literally in anything you can think of. You can add it in cakes, you can add it in cupcakes, muffins, in omelettes, yeah, you can make a green omelette, in smoothies, I know that a lot of people do that, so they add it in smoothies, chia puddings, there's really no end to this. However, I'm not going to show you any of those. There are different ways that I incorporate it in my diet and I'm going to show you four of them. So one of them is a wellness shot. Another way is ice cubes with spirulina, which is inspired by Dr. Oz's recipe. I also drink it as a latte. I'll show you how to make it. And finally, I add it in my pancakes. Most of the time I interchange, for example, on a weekend I have pancakes with spirulina, there will be a week I will have water with ice cubes and there will also be weeks I'm spirulina free. Do what works for you. My advice is not to rush and buy bulks of this ingredient as little goes a long way. So if you want to experiment with it, buy small amount, for example, 50 grams max and play with it initially to find what works for you. What is a wellness shot? A wellness shot is a shot of happiness. In my opinion, it should really be a nutrient-dense compact liquid or something solid that you can mix in your smoothies, in your water, in basically in your meals to provide that boost of macro and micronutrients to support your health and immune system. For this recipe, you will need one teaspoon of spirulina, one teaspoon of cinnamon, another great superfood which helps regulate your blood sugar, one teaspoon of honey, but I would say go as big as one tablespoon, 
and juice from a medium sized lemon for vitamin C. In a glass where you have your lemon juice, add a heaped teaspoon of spirulina, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and one teaspoon or one tablespoon of honey. Mix all the ingredients with a hand whisk. It is so much easier and quicker, trust me. And your wellness mix is ready. You can use a teaspoon or a tablespoon of this in your smoothies, in your porridge or with warm water. And it can last you up to seven days. If you're brave enough, I'm definitely not, you can drink this as is straight from the glass. I usually drink it with warm water. I find it that it goes down a lot easier that way. Save this in a container that can be shut well so the nutrients such as vitamin C can be retained. Otherwise, it will be oxidized and you will have a less nutrient dense shot. I know that we usually tend to play with dosages for nutrition, but because of the strong flavor of spirulina, the priority here is to ensure that your creations are easily consumable. I love these ones as well. They're so easy to use. It's basically a mix of water, spirulina and lemon juice. You, put, you create ice cubes with this mix and drink it with your water. And lemon actually helps with the grassy flavor of spirulina. I use an ice cube tray that fits 14 cubes. I mix one teaspoon of spirulina with the juice of one lemon and add a bit of water to ensure all cubes have the juice in them. Then save it in the freezer and once a day, either in the morning or in the afternoon, Drink it with a glass of water with a spirulina ice cube, that's what I do. You can make a weekly or a bi-weekly dosage, it's up to you. This tends to last for me for a couple of weeks. Now you can also follow Dr. Oz's recipe, which is a mix of spirulina and lime. Create ice cubes and drink two of those every day with your water and which one you want to follow it's up to you this one worked great for me actually so i'm using my recipe you'll still be a winner either way and after some yummy shots let's make a cozy drink that you can either drink in the morning or you can drink in the afternoon as a pick me up during the afternoon slump the main ingredients for this latte are vanilla infused almond milk, similar to what I have shown in a previous video, where you mix a milk of your choice with a vanilla pot. If you do not have a vanilla pot, don't worry, feel free to use half a teaspoon of vanilla extract for three fourths of a cup of milk. If you don't like vanilla flavor or you do not have either pot or extract, feel free to skip this part, or you can add maybe orange extracts or another one that you like. Then you will need half a teaspoon of spirulina. The flavor is really strong, so half a teaspoon goes a long way. And a teaspoon of honey. If you have and you want to, you could also add half a teaspoon of maca powder. It is a great source of fiber, vitamin C, copper and iron. In your cup, add spirulina, maca powder if you're using one, and fill up the glass with water up to one fourth. Add honey as well. And with an electric hand whisk, whisk the ingredients well. In a small pot, warm your vanilla infused milk or your regular milk whisk and add it to your cup. I have a detailed instructions on how to make cappuccinos at home with plant-based milk using a hand whisk, so you can watch that too if you're interested. Voila, a great spirulina pick-me-up latte. And by the way, my mom loves it, so I know for sure that this is a winner. I have topped this latte with bee pollen as I had some lying around and a little bit goes well with this latte.
let's say that a day comes and you're just over your spirulina ice cubes or your spirulina wellness shots or and god forbid your spirulina lattes <laughs> <laughs> and you'd like to be more adventurous you would like something more chewy and that includes spirulina dear friend i have a recipe for you too and that recipe is fluffy spirulina pancakes i just love them you will need the following ingredients half a cup of oat flour or oats that will be turned into flour with a blender that's what we are going to do one teaspoon of baking soda one heaped teaspoon of spirulina one egg two and a half tablespoon of yogurt i'm using sheep yogurt one tablespoon of honey and a bit of coconut oil or olive oil for the pan I'm using oats instead of oat flour, so I will blend the oats to create a flour-like consistency. Then I will add the baking soda and spirulina and will blend one more time and set aside. In a bowl, I will mix the egg with the yogurt until well combined. Then I will add the dry ingredients from the blender into the bowl and will mix very well. I will add my tablespoon of honey and will mix one more time. By the way, this is a great recipe and you can do it without spirulina as well. In a medium heat, place your pan and add your oil. When the oil is melt, add a tablespoon or one and a half of your butter to your pan for each pancake and cook on each side until it turns brownish. I just would like to show you how fluffy they come out. I love these pancakes. They can make between seven to eight, depending on how big you're making them. Place one pancake on top of another and drizzle with your favorite ingredients. I'm drizzling with raw honey and will crush walnuts and almonds. A bit of cinnamon would go here well too. Look at these beauties. They are super soft. And you do not taste spirulina at all, which is a bonus, as you still get the benefits. This and the spirulina latte are my two favorite ways of incorporating the ingredient in my diet. And these were my four ways of enjoying spirulina. By the way, in the description of this video, you can grab my free snack guide and my free ebook on what makes us healthy and happy, which is based on scientific research. And if you'd like to receive a weekly dose of delicious content, then feel free to subscribe to my newsletter as well. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It actually goes a long way and it means so much to me. 
subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload new videos. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next episode.